Hello everyone, I am completely re-recording the entirety of the lecture again because I did not resume it after the break. So, here we go again. Alrighty, we're going to do this in the exact same order we did it before. So, the first thing we're going to be creating is our main menu. We need to create a new scene for that. So we're going to right click in our scenes folder, go to create, scene. We're going to call this main menu. Let's open up our main menu scene. In here, we're going to go to Game Object, UI, and create a canvas. We're going to call this canvas Main Menu. Under this canvas, we're going to create an empty, and we are going to call this Main. This will represent our main menu with our Play, Settings, and Quit button. We're also going to create another empty. We're going to call this Settings. This will be our Settings menu. I'm going to turn this off for now. Under our main, we're going to go ahead, create an image. It's not going to look beautiful. Oopsies. We're going to head, go ahead and create an image. This is just going to be our background. Normally, I would name things in the hierarchy over here properly. I'm just going to keep this as image because I've already done this and I am sick of it. So <laughs> it's called image. Don't judge me. I'm going to go ahead and scale this up. Now, one thing that is really important for our resolution settings to work is that on our canvas, our main canvas, our main menu, and you will have to change this for your in-game UI well, and it might mess a couple things up and you'll have to move them around, but that is okay. On Canvas Scaler, under Canvas Scaler, instead of constant pixel size, we need to set it to scale with screen. The reference resolution will be 1920 by 1080. And we will set the match to 0 0.5. Also, in your game, just make sure for testing purposes we're using full HD 1920 by 1080 so you're seeing things accurately. Now, in our main, we're going to go ahead and create an empty and just call this buttons. This is where we're going to put all our buttons. So under buttons, let's go ahead and go to UI, Legacy, button. You can also use Text Mesh Pro button. I'm just using Legacy for this example. Now, this is pretty small for our button. We're going to go ahead and size this up just a little bit. Under this you will find text. We're going to call this play. This will be our play button. We're going to just size this up. And I will name this play button. If you click over here, hold Alt and click the center, it will center it in the center of your screen. We're going to drag our play button up just a little bit, and we're going to duplicate it twice. We will call the second one our settings button. We will call the third one our quits button. And again, I know some of you have already made menu and settings menus and so you don't have to do this exactly like I am doing it or even exactly how I have it with my script but there are certain things you will need to take from my script to use to get your resolution and sound settings to work so under settings we're going to change the text to settings under quit we're going to change our text to quit and there you go that's the basics of our menu setup now in our, on our main menu, our main canvas here, I gave you guys a script. It is called Menu Manager. We're going to be dragging our Menu Manager on to our main canvas. In our Menu Manager, there's a lot of stuff here. I don't want you guys to worry about everything right now. The main thing we need to worry about at the moment in our menu, menu Manager are just a few functions. Specifically, if I can find them. Here we go. We have this play pressed function, our quit pressed function, and we don't need, actually it's two functions. Our settings, we're doing all within the Unity editor, we're switching between the menu and the settings. Now this play press right here, you'll see we're switching to our game scene, which is just called sample scene. This all right here is just saving player press. This has to do with our volume settings. We will get into this later. But it's not important right now. Just know we're saving some player press here and we are loading our game. 
on quit, we are using application.quit to quit the application. This will do nothing within the Unity editor. This will only work after you have built your project. We're also saving some player prefs here. So let's go back into our Unity editor. And on our play button, I'm going to scroll down, and you'll see we have this button here. Now, you can actually make anything into a button. You could make a rectangle and then add this button component. I'm just using Unity's built-in default one for the sake of this lecture. Now, under button, you will have this on click event. You can add more events like hovers and stuff, but we're not getting into that right now. So, we're going to click this plus icon, and we're going to drag our main menu, main canvas, into here. We can now access all of the components on our main menu, such as our script, our menu manager script. So we're going to hover over menu manager, and this is our play button. So we're going to call on our play pressed function that I made. You can call on any functions in here. You can drag game objects in here, turn them on and off, play sounds with right from here within the Unity editor. On our quit, we're also going to do the same thing, but just call on our quit pressed function. Now, for the settings, this is going to work a bit differently. We're actually we're going to drag in our main, not our main menu. We're going to drag in our main here. This is this part. And we're going to use, we're going to go into game object and use set active bool. You may have seen set active before we've used this in scripts. We can set it active to true or false. We want this screen to disappear when we click settings and pop up the settings screen. So we're going to set active this screen to false. We're also going to drag in our settings. Game object set active to true. So this will turn off when we click settings, and this will turn on. Now there's nothing under settings right now, so let's fix that. So let's create an image. I'm going to change the color to black. And I'm going to go ahead, oopsies, I'm going to go ahead and scale this up to where we need it. Okay, that's good enough. And this is just our background. Now, under settings, we're going to go to UI, legacy, and create another button. Actually, no, we're not. We are going to go into main and copy our play button and paste it under settings. Make sure it's in settings. Drag it in. So we have our play button. This is actually going to be our back button now in our settings. Let's change our text to back. Perfect. I'm going to go ahead and put this on the bottom right for now. Now under our back button, we need to get rid of this right here. We're going to add a new one. We're going to bring our settings into here. We're going to do the same thing we did, but in reverse. We're going to turn our settings. We're going to set active to false. Then we're going to grab our main. Game object set active to true. Now we're going to turn off our settings. What should happen now when we run this is that we can click settings, it'll pop up our settings, we can click back and it'll go back. We can also play our game if we click play. Okay, so let's click our settings. Here's our settings menu. You can go back and forth and you'll notice in the hierarchy over here as we click, it's changing what is active. That's why organization is really important. Quit does not do anything right now, it will once we build the game. We're going to click play, and now we're playing our game, and there's some music. And the score is a bit off, we'll fix that later. It's like off to the side a little too far. So that's cool, we have all that set up and working. Now, let's go ahead and turn this off. And I'm actually going to, we're going to go ahead and create our pause menu now. I'm doing this in a bit of a different order. I think this will be a better order to do things in. So let's go into our game scene. Make sure, again, on the player UI, that the canvas get scaler has these settings. This is going to mess stuff up. That's why these are off to the side. So let's grab our high score text, text, score text, bring it up where it should be, and same with the player health. And now everything is all right, looking all right. Now, we need to create a pause menu. I also gave you another script. Now, you already have a checkpoint manager script. Um, so if you want, you can just add on to it from this because there's not many new stuff, or you can replace it with this script, but just know you'll probably have to change some things back. So it's probably easier to just replace 
uh, parts of the script of your checkpoint manager that you already have with what I'm, the new functions I'm putting in. Now on our game manager we have our checkpoint manager script. This is the new one. You'll notice we have this pause menu that we need to drag in. That's a new thing. And then we also have this is pause, we have this is pause boolean. Under our player UI, kind of like we did in the main menu, we're going to create a new game object and we're going to call this pause menu. Under this pause menu, we're going to go to UI, image, and we're going to go ahead and scale this image up. Just like we did before. I'll set it to black and make it a little transparent. That will be our background. Next in our pause menu, I'm going to create an empty and I'm going to call this buttons. This is where our buttons will be. And we're going to do this just like we did the main menu, kind of. And actually, just to make this easier for ourselves, let's go back into our main menu, go into main, I'm going to create a folder called widgets, and I'm just going to do this to make it easier on myself. We're going to grab our play button and use it as a base. Let's go back into our scene and open up sample scene, player UI, pause menu. Let's go into our widgets and drag in our play button under our pause menu. Now, let's right click this, go to prefab, and unpack completely. This is not going to be a play button anymore. Let's get rid of this. We're going to change this to resume button. Let's go ahead and change the text to resume as well. Now we have our resume button. Bring this, oopsies, let's bring this up just a little bit. We're going to go ahead and duplicate this. Bring it down a bit. We're going to call this menu button. This is how we'll get back to our menu. Let's go ahead and rename this. And lastly, we'll have our quit button. The player will be able to quit from the screen as well. Let's change the text to quit. Awesome. Now these should all be under buttons, so let's make sure we grab all these and drag it under buttons. Now we can move all of them at once. And even I think we can just center. Okay, never mind. It's not doing what I want it to. We'll do that. That looks good enough. Okay. Now, let's go into our game manager object and on our checkpoint manager, and I'll show you what the new things are. So you'll see we have a new boolean here called is pause. This is checking for if our game is currently paused. We also have a new game object called pause menu. This is how we'll reference our pause menu. Now on void start, we're making sure our cursor.lock state is locked and it's not visible. This makes it so we can't move our cursor and or see it. So when we're playing the game, we can't do that. We're also making sure the time scale is set to one, meaning it will play. Because if you pause it, go to the main menu and load the game back up, it'll be frozen. So that's why this is really important here. Now, we have an if statement down here in the update. If input dot get key, key code dot escape. So if we press escape, and if we are not already paused, we're going to call on this pause menu on function and set is pause to true. In this new function here, we're going saying time dot time scale equals zero. Time scale is a way to change the time scale of our game. Now, this is essentially freezing it, pausing it, stopping it. Then we're going to set our pause menu to active. We're going to set it to true so we can see our pause menu. We're going to turn our cursor on. We're going to unlock our cursor and make it visible so we can see it and move around and click things. The pause menu off function is doing the complete opposite of this and also setting our is paused back to false. We also have our load menu function. This just loads our scene to our main menu and our quit function here. So let's go back in to our Unity editor here. And under our buttons, let's start with resume. So we need to drag in our game manager because that's what our script that we need is on. Let's go to checkpoint manager, which is what we're doing this in. And we'll need to say pause menu off because when they click resume, it's going to resume the game and turn the pause menu off. We're calling on this function. You could also very easily, very easily set it up so you could press escape and turn it off. I didn't do that for this example. You press escape to pull it up, click resume to resume the game. On our menu button, 
we're also going to drag in our game manager here and under checkpoint manager call on our load menu function on our quit button we will do basically the same thing but we're calling on our quit function and it's as simple as that so let's turn off our pause menu and one last thing we need to do is in our game manager we need to drag in our pause menu this is just our pause menu under our UI everything needs to be grouped together it's important we're gonna put this in there now if we go in you'll see our scores going up I can press escape and our score stops we can resume the game it continues quit will do nothing right now until we've actually loaded the application we can also click menu menu could not be loaded oh yes that's very important so the menu can't be loaded because we haven't added it to our build settings so if we go to file and go to build settings we will add our open scenes but doing this now will do nothing because we're just in our sample scene so let's actually open up our main menu scene and now add open scenes now this is really important this is wrong we want to drag our main menu to zero because whatever zero whatever scene is at zero is what it's going to load first when you launch your game you want the menu to launch first now this should work completely fine let's go ahead and actually hold up <laughs> let's actually turn on our main want that on by default you can press play run our game and go back to our menu and there you go we have a functional pause menu awesome so now that we have our main menu and pause menu set up we're gonna go into getting our settings to work this is the meat of everything and the hardest part and so just pay close attention and you can rewatch this whenever you want and please email me if you have questions now everything you need is in this script but there are a few things we need to make here so we're gonna start with doing our audio first now first we need to make three sliders one for our master volume one for our music volume and one for our sound effects so under settings here I'm gonna right click and create an empty and we're gonna call this sound settings we're gonna right click this again go to UI and create a slider just like with buttons you could create your own slider I'm just using the default but it needs to have this slider component under it so this is what we get at the start we're gonna scale this up a bit our slider is made up of a background a fill area and our handle which we grab I'm not gonna mess with any of that right now now you can see you can change the value here and this also affects the slider now just like our on click we also have an on value changed for our slider which is different basically any time the user changes the value of this it will do whatever you put in here it will call any function you will you put in here play any sound you put in here it will do anything you want so we're gonna go ahead and move this over here and we're gonna call this slider our master volume slider awesome under this I'm gonna go to UI I'm gonna go to legacy and just create some text I'm gonna drag this up a bit I'm gonna go ahead and call this master volume I'm gonna change the color of the text to white and the font size we're also going to increase just drag it down a little more and now we can control this we can move this whole slider around here so there's our master volume we're gonna duplicate that twice one two second one will be our music volume we need to change the text to say music volume let's bring this down a bit lastly we have our master volume no we don't we have our sound effects volume and we'll change our text to SFX volume SFX stands for sound effects and we're just gonna drag this down too. under sound settings I'm gonna create an empty game object and call it sliders I'm gonna grab all our sliders and group them under here just to keep things organized and now we can also move all of them around I think this size is okay for now so now that we have those sliders if we go to our main menu here we can drag our sliders in our master slider will go in our master slider 
our music and our music and our sound effects and our sound effects. Now, you'll notice here that there's this main mixer and we need to drag one in. A mixer is basically a way to group audio together and control them and it is how we will be controlling our volume. I'm going to show you how to create a mixer now. And actually I had already created some stuff from our last, the last time. We're going to keep those in there. Okay, so we have our one music and one sound effect here. Let's go ahead and create a new folder. And you can use whatever sound effects and music you want, of course. This is just example ones, so they sound weird. We're going to call this um, audio... Oh my goodness, I can't spell, apparently. Audio mixers. We're going to right-click in here. We're going to go to create. And around, like in the middle here, we're going to create an audio mixer. We're going to call this our main... Oopsies. We're going to call this our main mixer. Now, we're going to double click on our main mixer here. And that is interesting. Okay. okay, technical difficulties. If it gives you an error saying that the audio like mixer controller is missing, just restart your Unity project and then create another one and you're fine. You'll create an audio mixer, once again by right clicking, going to create, clicking audio mixer. You will name this main mixer. You're going to double click on main mixer and it will pull up this window here. Now. You'll see under groups we have master. You're going to click master, click the plus icon, and add a new group. We're going to call this our music. We're going to click on master once again, add another child to it, and call it SFX for sound effects. It is really, really, really important that your music and sound effects are childs of master. Sound effects cannot be a child of music, master cannot be a child of master, or a, sorry, master cannot be a child of music. Music and sound effects must be a child of master because when we change master, it will also change music and sound effects. So, that is how that's going to work and how they must be grouped. Now, another really important thing. We need to be able to change these values within our scripts. So, on our master, you'll notice we have this exposed parameters and it says zero, the list is empty. Now, while clicked on our master here, you can see we can change our pitch and volume. We're gonna right click on our volume and click expose volume of master to script. We now have one exposed parameter. It says volume of master, my exposed param. We're going to double click on this and we're going to call this master volume. Now, it is very important that you remember what you name this. Because, and press enter, by the way, after you do that, don't just click out of it and make sure you click back in and say it's called that because we are using this name here to reference it within our script. This is very important that you intentionally name this. We're going to do the same on all the other ones. We're going to go to music, right click on volume, expose, double click here, call this, oopsies, call this music volume, press enter. Lastly, we're going to do it with sound effects, SFX volume, enter. And you can see it says music volume is volume of music, volume of master, volume of SFX, so you know they're in the right place. That is all the setup you need to do for this audio mixer. Now, I want to have music in my menu. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my sounds, and I got some music here. We're going to drag this into our hierarchy, and we're going to call this menu music. I'm going to go ahead and bring this down to 0 0.2, because it's usually, oopsies, 0 0.3, because it's pretty loud by default. We're going to have it play on awake, so it'll play automatically when it starts, and we're going to have it loop. Now, this is the really important part. In our audio clip here, it says what our audio clip is. In our output, this is where we choose our mixer. We need to put this in our music mixer. So we're going to double click that. This is now a part of our music mixer. So when we change the volume of our music mixer by moving this, when we set that up in our script, it will also change the volume of this audio source and any audio source that is in the music mixer. And same for the sound effects mixer and master volume mixer. And the music mixer is also, not only is this in the music mixer, but because this, the music mixer is a child of the main volume, master volume mixer, it will also be a part of that too. So we have that set up. Another thing I'm gonna do in the main menu, or actually we'll just do it for the back button. Another thing I'm going to do is go into sounds and go into my sound effects. This is just a weird hammer sound effect. The point is it's a sound effect, it was free, and I'm using it as a test. 
We're also going to drag this in here, and we're going to call this button click sound. And I'm not going to, this is the only sound effects I'm using. Normally I'd make an empty game object and call it sound effects and put them all under here. We don't want this to play on awake. We don't want it to loop. We're going to set the volume to just like half. Now we need to add the output to sound effects. This will be a part of our sound effects audio mixer. Now in our back button, on the on click, we're going to go ahead and drag this button click sound in. And directly from here, we can just go to the audio source and play it. Just like that. So now if we go into here and we press the back button, we'll hear a sound once this loads. Any day now. We heard that sound when I clicked it. Beautiful. And we can hear our um, volume playing. Our music volume. This is great. So now it is time for the scripting. So, in here, too, we need to make sure we drag our main mixer into our main mixer right here. So we're going to drag that in there. Now I'm going to explain the script pretty thoroughly, although I will skip over a few things just because, well not skip over, but not explain a few things in depth, but I'm going to give you a basic idea of how things are working. This is a public reference to our main mixer that we just drug, drug in. This is These are public static floats, meaning they're public and can be referenced, but we cannot change them within our Unity editor. This represents our master volume, our music volume, and our sound effects volume. We also have three public sliders. These are our master slider, music slider, and sound effects slider. We drug those in earlier. In our start, don't worry about this yet. Now in our start, we are also setting our, um, or actually, we're setting our master volume, music volume, and sound effects volume to equal these player prefs that we're creating, which are our master slider value, music slider value, and sound effects slider value. We are using the player prefs, remember, to save the sound data. So that's what these are for. Not only do we need to create player prefs for saving the master volume, music volume, and sound effects volume, we also need to create player prefs to save the slider values. And that is what we're doing here. So that's what these do. This is getting those floats at the start from those player prefs. And this is for our full screen toggles. Don't worry about that. This is all resolution stuff that we're not going over yet. Now you can see we're saving these player prefs that I'm talking about right up here whenever we click play or quit the game. Just as a precaution. You don't need to do that, but it's a good idea. Whenever you are setting player prefs, you should really save them for the most part. Now, we have a public void called master volume change. This is what we are going to be referencing in our master volume slider right here. We're going to call this function here. In this function, we are passing in a float which is a decimal number. The float we are passing in is whatever they have dragged it to at the time. Now, under here, we're setting our master volume equal to whatever that float is, and then we're calling on this function here, which I'm going to show you here in a sec. We're doing that for all of these, except for the music one, obviously. We're setting it, the music volume to it and the sound effects volume to it. This update mixer volume function is very important. We're saying in our main mixer, we're saying set float, and then master volume. That is referencing this exposed parameter right here. That is why that is important. So those need to match. And then we're doing some math here. I'm not going to explain why we're using that math. Just know it's what you do for sound settings. So we're setting our master volume to whatever our master volume is. And same for all of these. And then we're also setting those player prefs to that. So it saves them and then saving the player prefs. This is for resetting our volume prefs, this basically just sets our slider values back to 1, so that's to max 100. Oh, that's another thing I forgot to show you. On your sliders, on every single one of these, the minimum value should be 0 0.00001, I believe, or is it 0 01? I think it's that, there you go, to 1. And that will give you more precise and consistent results, instead of like 1 to 100. So our max value is 1, so we're setting the sliders to 1 there, as well as getting the float from our setting the master volume, music volume, and sound effects volume to our master slider value, music slider value, and SFX slider value. This reset volume prefs is used up here. 
when basically the first time they open the game on another computer, we want the volume to default to max and we want the sliders to default to max. And this was having some issues with working before and I think I'm realizing now as I go over this why. Because we're setting our master music and sound effects volume to equal the master slider values. Now, the problem with that... Actually, there's no problem with that. Never mind. I'm just kidding. Anyway, moving on. Player Pro, because this did work on my computers. It just bugged out for some reason. If it, if it bugs out, though, it doesn't break anything. It's just that it doesn't set it to 100 by default, which is what I want it to do. It's not a huge deal. I'm not 100% sure why that's breaking. If I figure it out in the future, I will let you know. I'll send an email to all of you. Um, but if not, and you're having issues with that, don't worry about it. Everything still works. It's not a game-breaking thing. It's just that it doesn't automatically set it to 100 the very first time you load the game. It's literally only a, a problem once, and it's not even a problem. So it's just kind of annoying. Anyway, we also have this res left and res right functions. That is not part of the music. Ignore that. <laughs> Sorry. That is not part of sounds. My brain went somewhere else. These are all for resolution stuff. We're not talking about that right now. So that is it, actually, then, for our sound. And I believe I went over the update. Yes, our update function, our reset volume prefs. All we're doing up here, basically, is creating a player pref. We're saying player prefs.ginit, first time opening, if it equals null, which it should if it's on someone else's computer, it's going to call on these functions, which together will set their volume and slider values to 100. So by default, the volume will be 100 when they first open the game. This will never be called again on their computer because the player prep set int will be set to 1, which is not null, so this won't work. And yes, this is it's just warning us about that. That's fine. Sorry, I was just looking that over. And yeah, that's basically all you're doing. For that, that's what you need to add into your, uh, that's what the script is doing for volume. So, apologize, my brain got a little flustered there, it's been a morning. So, in our main menu, for some reason these are not assigned now, I thought I dragged those in, but apparently not. Drag your master slider to your master, music to music, sound effects slider to sound effects. We're not worrying about the resolution, things will still work. Now, this will just work now. If we press play hear our music. Watch these here as I drag these. Did absolutely nothing. Oh, wait. I'm stupid. It will not work right now. We have not called on the functions here. So, on our value changed in our master, we need to go ahead and drag our main menu into here, our canvas, because that is what our menu manager script is on. Now, what we need to do is call on our master volume changed here. Oh, actually, do not call on this. This is a big mistake. Make sure you're using the dynamic float version of these functions. If you do the normal one down here, it will not work. Use master volume changed under dynamic floats. That is my bad. And you will do the same for each of these. For music. Oopsies. Oh, goodness gracious. Okay, hold on. And finally, sound effects. Sound effects volume change. Now it will work. <laughs> I promise. So, you'll see, as we move this down, the master moves down. And it's at zero right now. The music is still going, but it's muted because this is at zero. We can also change our music volume. Well, that's interesting. Of course I'm having bugs now. Why? Oh, that's interesting. Ah, so the reason I was having those issues, again, make sure on all of your sliders you set the value to 0 0.0001 to 1 on all of them. <laughs> Not just one, all of them. If you're having that issue, set it to all of them. Or make sure all of them are set to that. That was my bad. Now this should work without any issues. So, we can mute our music volume, 
This also shows there's nothing in the master because there's no music playing. You can turn it back up. Now, you should be able to hear this. You can hear that sound effect playing. If we turn this down, it's much quieter. You can mute that as well. We can turn our music all the way up. Have no sound effects. Have both. Master volume can go down. Affects both. Everything is working as intended. This is how everything should work. And there you go. There's our volume settings. That's it. It's done. Congratulations. Now, as far as the player preps go, when we build it, we'll have to test and make sure all that's working, but it should work completely fine. Now, on to the resolution settings. And actually, before we go to the resolution settings, I'll go ahead and show you that this affects the music in the game, too. So, if we go into our scenes and we go to our sample scene, we have our game music, and make sure the output is set to our music mixer. And then, what we do to our music mixer will affect it. Let's go into here. Let's turn our volume up and play. We can hear the music in here now. Let's go to our menu. Let's mute our music. We can't hear it now. Beautiful. Same works with sound effects too. So everything is working as intended. Now, last part of this is our resolution settings. This takes a little bit more UI setup, but it's not too horrible. In our settings, let's right click, create an empty. We're gonna call this res settings. Or actually, I'll just do screen settings. It's not all resolution technically. So, first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna right click this, and we are going to go to UI Legacy button. This will be our res right. May seem a little odd, but it will make sense in a bit. Gonna make it around that size. I might shrink, end up shrinking it down, but we'll see. Let's increase our text size here. We're just gonna do this. And then we are going to bold it, like so. Let's go ahead and bring this in a little bit. Let's shrink it down. There we go. So we have one of these. Let's go ahead and duplicate this. This will be called res left. I just realized this <laughs> res right needs to be... Hold on, I completely got this backwards. Like, apparently I'm been doing making games for too long I'm like forming dyslexia I don't know I don't know what's happening anyway this is our res right this is our res left they're beautiful they're glorious we love them now in between these I'm gonna create another game object not another game object anyway legacy text this will be our res uh, label I'll just say it's what's gonna, this is gonna be displaying our current resolution. We're just gonna go 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, because it'll be in that format, so we know what size we need to make it and stuff like that. Let's make this a bit bigger. Let's go ahead and make the text white, and increase our font size. Go ahead and center this too. Beautiful. We're also gonna create UI image. Whoopsies. This is going to be the background of this. Let's go ahead and drag our res label under our image. And we are going to change our image color to a bit of like a gray. Let's bring this down a bit. There we go. So now, let's position these how we want them, like so. Let's actually grab our res left and pull that in there. Awesome. Now we're going to group all these together in an empty game object. We're going to call this empty game object, uh, what do we want to do this? We'll do res settings. Let's grab all these, drag it under there. And now we can control our res settings as a whole, right there. I might make this just a little bigger. So there we go. Here's our res settings. Amazing. Things aren't centered perfectly, but for this example, it doesn't matter. You can make things more organized when you do it. Now, what I'm actually going to do as well, I think, we're going to do one more thing. 
I'm going to create some text right here. I'm going to go ahead and call this Reso oopsies. resolution. Awesome. Let's go ahead and increase this, increase the font size, make it white. Let's drag this up here, center it, make the font size a little smaller. We'll put it right there. No, we won't. That looks disgusting. We'll put it there. That's good enough. So now we have this for our resolution. Perfect. The next thing we will need under screen settings, we're going to right click, go to UI, create a toggle. This will be our full screen toggle. Go ahead and expand this. Let's go into our label here, and we're going to call this full screen. We're going to change the text to white, and we're going to increase the font size. There is probably good. Maybe a little more. Now we're going to also change the sizing of our little box here that we're checking. We're going to move it just a little bit to the side, like so. And that looks pretty good. We'll go with that. And again, you can fully customize the highlighted colors, normal colors, pressed colors, selected colors, disabled colors, all this stuff. I'm just using default stuff for the sake of this demonstration. We're going to put our full screen, like, I don't know, about there. And we just need one more thing. And we can get in, I can get into showing you how the script works. The last thing we need for this is one more button. And actually, Let's just go ahead and grab our back button. Let's duplicate this. I'm going to put it under our screen settings. This will no longer be a back button. This will be our apply button. This is how we'll apply our resolution settings and our full screen. We'll say apply. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. I just want to do this. There we go. Just make it a little smaller. It can go around there. It looks a little weird, but whatever. Um, and we'll go ahead actually and make the font size a little bit less for that. Perfect. Okay. So we have everything we need now. In our screen settings, we have our resolution settings here, our full screen toggle, and our apply. Now, let's go into our main menu here. So our resolutions label, if we go into res settings, that is our, where in the, okay, there it is. We should have named it properly. Name things accordingly. We're going to call this res label. And then res label, oopsies, res label text. Make sure this is dragged under there. Oh, dear. What in the oh I see what I did. Okay, somehow I accidentally which is this? Cool. This goes outside of this. This is not the res label. This is our res illusion text. My bad. Anyway, we have our res label here, which consists of an image behind it and then the text. Now, in our main menu, we need to go ahead and drag our res label, the text specifically, under there. And then we also need to drag our full screen toggle into here. That's all we need to drag in. We will go over this right in, in a sec. Let's go into our script. First off, we are using a list. A list is a collection of strings. Now, we are using this in a very unique way. We're creating a public list. It's basically an array of strings. And we, what we would normally say is list string like this, and then we put string here, and then it's a list of strings. We're doing something a little different. We are creating a public class called ResItem. This is a public integer with two properties, horizontal and vertical. So each item in this list is going to be this class ResItem, which has is going to have two integers, but in string form, or which is going to have 
two integers, but I believe it reads it as a string because it's a list. It's going to have our horizontal and vertical resolutions. Now, we'll get into that more later. We also have our private int selected res. This is our current selected resolution. We have our public text resolution label. This is just what it's showing. And then our public toggle full screen toggle. In our start function, we are checking first. We're setting our full screen is on screen dot full screen. Basically, is it full screen? Is it not? It's, this does it. You really don't have to do much for full screen toggles, actually. It's super nice. This basically checks if it needs to be full screen or not, depending on if the toggle is toggled. So it's nice. Anyway, this part here is a little fancy and a little bit complicated. And so if you don't understand it, that's completely fine. The point is that you understand what it's doing and why it's doing it. What we want to do here is in this list, in our Unity editor here, I've made it so in this script, you can add as many resolutions as you want here for them to select between. Now, chances are you'll add some resolutions, but someone might download your game and play it on their computer, and their resolution size might not be any of these ones that they can select for your game. So what this is going to do is it is going through our list of resolutions, and it is checking if their screen size matches any of them. If it does, it's going to automatically set it to it. If it doesn't, it is going to make a new resolution specifically for that person's computer and it's going to add it to the list so that way the screen matches their screen size which is pretty cool so what we're doing first is we have this new bool we're creating down here and it's called found res so found resolution we're setting it to false by default we're using what's called a for loop which is going to go through this until i so we're saying in our for loop we're creating this integer called i and setting it equal to zero each time we run this loop we're increasing i by one so when we go through it the first time, i is 0. When we go through it the second time, i is 1. When we go through it the third time, i is 2. And it will only go through this if i is less than the resolutions.count. What is the resolutions.count? The resolutions.count represents the amount of items in our list. So if we have three res different resolution sizes here, it will go through this three times. Although it may only go through it once if the first one it finds matches the resolution. So it's going to go through here and it's going to check if your screen width width is equal to the resolution, like the current um, list item, if it's equal to its horizontal value, and if its height is equal to its vertical value. If it is, then it found your resolution. Great. It sets this equal to true. It sets that to your resolution and updates the res label. If not, it'll go through this again, and it'll keep going through until it's gone through all of the, all of the different res items, which is what we called this, in your list. And if it's not able to find your resolution, it is going to run this right here. It is going to create a new res item to go on your list. It's going to, it's going to set the new res item equal its horizontal value, which we specified it would have a horizontal and vertical value here. It's going to set that equal to your current screen width and then the vertical one equal to your current screen height. It is then going to add this new resolution to the list. It's then going to make sure that your selected resolution is equal to this new one, and then it's going to update the res label. So basically, this will automatically fit to your screen size, no matter what, when you run the game. Whether that's it matches one of the ones you created or you specified in here, or it just has to create a new one, which is pretty cool. After that, we have some other functions down here, some that we called on up above. So, our res left and res right, what are these? So these buttons here, this is left, this is right. Our res right, when we click it, it simply is going through the list, in, increasing through the list, so if that makes sense. So, in our list, we have certain positions. So, the first item in your list is at position 0. The second item is at position 1, 3, so on, 2, 3, so on. This is going to, when you click this, it's going to go through that and update your label to whatever the current resolution that you're on is. The res right, or sorry, I should have been talking about the left one. That was the function I was just looking at. But these both do the same thing. The right one increases it. It goes to the right through your list. And then the left goes left. And then it will display which item in the list you're currently on and show what that resolution is. And then if you hit apply, it will apply that resolution, which is pretty cool. Now, it's calling on this update res label each time it does this. The update res label is what updates the text in the middle here. 
So what it's doing actually, and I was wrong actually about how it reads this, our list is of integers, not of strings. That's my bad. Um, because what it's doing here is it's saying our resolution label.txt equals our resolutions, which is this list here, or the list up there, selected res.horizontal, so this value here, to string. So it's converting whatever this integer is to a string. It is then adding this little x in the middle, two spaces on the side, and then putting our vertical one. So we display our resolution. The apply graphics button function here is being called when we hit the apply graphics button. This says screen.set resolution, and it's going to set the resolution to whatever your selected res is. And then the full screen toggle, it'll set it to full screen or not full screen, depending on if it's toggled on or off. And that's what we have for our resolution. Now, let's make sure everything is dragged in properly. It is. So here we can add as many resolutions as we want for options. So let's go ahead and add one. Let's do, um, let's do 1920. By, and actually, you would want to add the smallest to biggest. So let's, let's do some resolution sizes here. We'll do we'll add three. The biggest one we'll add will be, uh, I believe it's. Oh gosh, I need to actually look up resolution sizes. Hold on. <laughs> I always forget them. I know 1920 by 1080. Okay, here we go. So let's go ahead. The first one we'll add here is. 1280 by 720. The next one we'll add is going to be 1920 by 1080. Lastly, we're going to add 2560 by 1440. It should be zero. Hello. There we go. So here we go. So we have the oops, we have these different resolutions here that we've added. So when we call on this function in the start here, it's going to go through all three of these. If your resolution size is one of them, that's great. It matches. It'll set it to that. So for this instance, this monitor here is 1920 by 1080, so it would set it to that one. If I didn't add 1920 by 1080 though and took that out, it would still work and it would make that a new one. So when I click play here, actually first um, in our we need to actually add our correct functions. Uh, what in God's name? Did I already? Okay, we're just going to get rid of everything we're doing. Oh, that's the back button. It was the back button before. That's why there was stuff there. We're going to click on this plus here for apply. We're going to bring in our main menu here. Go to menu manager. And now this is our apply button. So we need to do apply graphics. That's what that's going to do when we click on that. On our full screen toggle, we actually don't need to do anything. That is all handled in the script. Our res right, though, you know, go ahead and click here, drag in our main menu, because that's what our main menu manager script is on. I'm going to go to menu manager, click res right. So it calls on that function anytime you click that. We're going to do the same for our res left. Menu manager, res left. Perfect. And that is everything set up, actually. Now, when we start this, you won't actually you won't actually be able to see anything really happening. You'll see the label update. We can test if that is working and that is great, but it won't do anything until we've built the game as far as like actually setting the resolution in full screen too because it's locked right now in our editor. So you'll see it's actually smart enough. It does know that it's 1920 by 1080. If we go back, we can go down sizes. We can also go up sizes. And if I clicked apply, it would set it to that, but same with full screen and stuff too. And turn our music up a little bit. Actually, I'll put these by default up to here. So, we're actually going to build this now and test it, and I'm going to show you how you're going to be submitting it. So, let's go ahead and turn our settings off right now and turn our main back on. Let's test and make sure everything is still working in our settings. Cool. Cool. Okay. So, what you're going to do is you're going to go to File and Build Settings. Make sure you have your main menu and sample scene in there. If you have more, that's fine too. Make sure the main menu, the one you want to load up first, is at zero. On our desktop, I'm actually going to delete that because I was using that before. We're going to create a new folder, and I'm just going to call this class build. And this is where we're going to be storing all our data. So, file, 
Build Settings, Build, select your folder that you want things to go in, select Folder. It's going to build your game. Let's just give it a sec. It won't take too long with mine because there's not much there. It'll open automatically. We don't want that because I just want to show you how you get to it. So this is our folder here. This is our class build. This is what you will send me. You will right click it. You will compress this to a zip file. You will send me this zip file. This is what, how, are you, how you are submitting your assignment. Now, I will unzip it and then open it like this. And this is what we're clicking on to run our game. Don't delete anything in there. And by default, it set everything to max, which is great. I had an issue with that before, I don't know why. And things are a little weird looking and blurry, but it's fine. This is just an example. Our master volume works. Music volume works. Sound effects work. Let's go ahead and bring these down a bit. Now, let's try our resolution stuff. Let's turn full screen off and press apply. We're not in full screen anymore. Turn it back on. Let's decrease our resolution. Let's go down to here, click apply. Things are really blurry. An interesting thing about that, too, I don't know if you noticed, but it actually got rid of the volume text there, which is kind of interesting when you change your resolution. So you may have to do some tests and make sure things are all working how they're supposed to. But yeah, so we can go down a resolution. We can go back up to what it's supposed to be. Right now I'm not full screen. This obviously is way too big. This isn't our actual resolution. <laughs> So let's go back down to here and let's full screen it again. All of that works great. Now, let's actually take it off full screen and go down to here. We're gonna keep it like that. We're gonna back out of here. We're gonna quit. That quit button works, that's great. We're gonna load it back up. It should have saved our volume and resolution settings, which I can already tell it saved our resolution settings because it loaded it up like this. And our volume is saved, perfect. That is what you will need to test. Let's bring this back up to here. Let's click play. You also need to make sure your pause works. You can resume You can go back to your menu. And most importantly too, you can quit from here. And there you go. That is your assignment and that is what you will be submitting me. You will submit me this zip file. Now, how this is graded, as soon as I pull this up, and I will be adding in the scripts that you need as well as the lecture here and even an example, this one from class. I'm going to add the one I just created from class into here for you to use and test out under resources. This assignment is worth a bit more than usual. This is worth 30 points. Your main menu, the student created a main menu where they can click, play, quit, and open the settings menu. That's worth five points. Your audio